Acer's GM712 is remarkably similar to the BenQ X500i I reviewed just last week, at least on paper. Actually, in theory, this Acer model should actually be a better gaming projector since it not only supports either 4K60 or 1080p 240, but it also supports variable refresh rates, also known as adaptive sync, free sync, or G sync. That is, on top of also uh, supporting or sporting a claimed 4000 lumen light output compared to the 2200 in the BenQ model. Oh, and this is like £200 cheaper too. So why am I not blown away by this? Well, let me explain. Acer's GM712 looks pretty cool with its screen printed top and otherwise matte black look. It is clearly a gaming projector that's evident even from a distance. The I.O. looks remarkably familiar with two HDMI 2.0 ports, a VGA port no less, RS-232 serial, audio in and out, SPDF, and two USB ports. Well, technically there's a third for the included Wi-Fi dongle. Clearly, people have been putting this in the wrong way round, as the dongle is actively labelled this way up. It tucks into a slot in the back that is going to be pretty difficult to get back out. My understanding for why this is an external dongle and not built in, which should actually mean you get better signal on this too, is to get around certification processes. It's actually really common, especially in the projector space. As for the rest of the physical, the lens has both uh, zoom or manual zoom and manual focus control with the IR receiver for the included remote just next to the lens. Despite it being forward facing, it's been pretty good at picking up those inputs. The remote itself is fine. It's definitely on the cheaper side and honestly just makes me appreciate the BenQ one more. But it does the job. You do of course have some physical buttons on the top of the projector too, if you'd rather. If like my very temporary setup you're resting the projector on its base, like on a desk or something, it does have two threaded legs, one in the front at the centre for sort of tilt adjustments and one of the two rear legs for more horizontal balancing. These are fine pitched threads, so adjustments can take a while. Compared to the X500i, which not only used a very coarse thread, but also had a sort of free movement latch, so you just pull it and then you can pull the stand or the, the foot out to whatever height you want and then do the final adjustments there. The last thing I should mention about the physical aspect is that the shell itself is really just the same shell that they've been using for years. That's made abundantly clear by the bulb replacement hatch. This is an LED DLP projector which doesn't have an easily replaceable bulb, and yet they still have the hatch where if you do remove this, it then has a wear protective gear when replacing the bulb sticker. There are a lot of parts spin parts in this. Software wise, the smart source is just Android. Not Android TV like the BenQ, just an Android tablet install with a third party TV style launcher screen. It uses Aptoid, I think is how you say that, as its app store which just sideloads the APK files for the apps. That's never great, especially since it seems the app choice there is pretty limited and feels a little like I'm using a like kind of sketchy dodgy cheap Android box from like AliExpress. There is no Plex app, for example, which is rather annoying for me personally. It's also completely missing Google Play services, which means that even though you can download the Android TV launcher, it just crashes when you try and open it. I'd also note that this feels a little clunky and slow already, let alone in a few years time with no guarantee of software or security updates. And the fact that this is fully built in means that you can't just upgrade it uh, later like you can with the external BenQ unit. Luckily, you can just hook up your own sources to the two HDMI ports, which I gladly did. 
My first impressions were that this looks pretty good. It's a considerably longer throw projector, meaning that at the same distance, this is a much sort of shorter or smaller frame uh, than the X500i would uh, offer, although it is noticeably brighter, even at 50% brightness versus the 60% I was using on the BenQ. As with the BenQ review, I don't have the equipment to adequately test things like brightness, contrast, or color performance, so please do check out some more seasoned projector reviewers who do have that sort of kit before making any purchasing decisions. To the eye though, this does look pretty good. It has a wall color compensation feature, which actually helped a fair bit. And for content, I think it looked just as sharp and vibrant. For gaming, it was okay, but the smaller image and what felt like a more sluggish input delay meant that it wasn't quite as good as the X500i. There is one very key piece of information you should know about the GM712 though. You can either have 1080p at 240Hz, or you can enable variable refresh rate, which then locks the maximum refresh rate to 144Hz at 1080p. I can't get it to run at 240Hz and have VRR on, or actually at 4040p at anything higher than 60Hz for that matter, and that's an especially large problem because at least with my test setup, the 240Hz mode was completely useless with the insane amount of tearing that was present. Like, multiple torn frames on screen at once, and not even just in games. Even on the desktop, it was clear that it was tearing. It was just an awful experience, so enabling VRR is a must-do. Sadly, that means you get like, half the advertised refresh rate. Interestingly, doing some input lag testing with VRR on, it's around 20 milliseconds, but at just 240 hertz, it was 30 milliseconds. Both of these figures are still pretty naff too. Uh, the X500i's worst result was around 9 milliseconds, and with no keystone corrections, it was just 4.2 milliseconds. So for this to be effectively five times slower at best, well, that isn't great. I did also try the response time test, mostly as a way to see in microsecond scale what the projector is doing. It turns out that it's doing pulse width modulation for brightness of the, the various colors. As in, when you're displaying RGB 102 across the whole screen, the, uh, the LEDs are only on for like half of the frame time, but at RGB 255, it's on for basically the whole time. That's a kind of interesting and unique way to do it, although it does mean that the flickering is actually variable, which is just worse for me and my flicker sensitivity. You can see this in the high-speed footage, where the image is or turns black quite regularly compared to the BenQ, which was on the whole time, but just sort of, well, potentially a bit better for that flicker sensitivity. Looking at the totality of this product, I find it hard to justify why you would save the money and buy this over the X500i. That is an undeniably better experience. It's a shorter throw, it has a better user experience in a proper Android TV box that can be upgraded, and offers a genuinely TV replacement experience, plus a super low latency and is just a great gaming experience. The GM712 isn't bad per se, but I don't think that it justifies its MSRP. Happily, it seems that it's being sold for more like a thousand pounds right now, and at that price tag, I think it's much easier to justify. It has some shortcomings, for sure, but with the X500i being 50% more, oh, I can see why you might opt for this instead. I still would rather have the X500i. If I'm spending a thousand, I'd rather spend 1500 and get the best experience, but you know, that's me. Of course, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. 
Of the two that I've reviewed thus far, which of them would you pick? And would you go with a projector rather than, say, a new QD OLED as your TV? Let me know in the comments down below. I will, of course, leave a link to this in the description if you're interested. And if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon, check out plenty of other videos in the end cards, including that BenQ review. If you haven't seen it yet, do go check it out. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.